Hello, greetings from Prague, Czech Republic. This is Roman Barta, and I am going to speak about some recent results that we achieved together with my students. Specifically, I will talk about how to translate abstract plans to plans executable on re-robots. And when I say re-robots, I mean re-robots, like this one. So, let's start. In this presentation, I am going to talk about a special kind of coordination planning problem called multi-agent pathfinding. So let's start with the description of the multi-agent pathfinding problem. We are given a graph like this one with nodes and edges or arcs, and we are given a set of agents. At the beginning, each agent is sitting in one of the initial nodes, and it has assigned a destination node that the agent wants to reach. At any time, the agent can either move to one of its neighboring nodes, or it can wait where the, where in the node where is it right now. The task of multi-agent pathfinding is to find collision-free passes for all the agents. Collision-free means that the agents are not allowed to be at the same time at the same location. So, for example, the red agent starts moving first and the blue agent is waiting because the node V3 is already occupied. And then they can move to reach their destinations. Frequently, the graphs are not arbitrary graphs, but the graphs with a structure like the grid-like maps. We use these maps in our experiments. Multi-agent pathfinding has numerous practical applications. Autonomous warehousing is the premier among these applications. But there are others, like traffic junctions, computer games, or even train scheduling can be seen as a multi-agent pathfinding problem. Even some puzzles are instances of multi-agent pathfinding. So it's a practically important problem. But there is a gap between abstract model and practical execution of plans. Let's assume a map like this one with seven nodes and the initial location of the agent is V1 and the agent wants to move to the node V7. In the classical model, we just need six move actions to go from V1 to V7. But when we execute this plan on V robots, the robot needs to turn several times. We actually need to insert four turning actions uh, to execute that plan. If turning takes significant time in comparison with moving, this may lead to desynchronization of plans because if the robot is moving just forward, it will move much, much faster. So what we can do with this? In the abstract model, we use just two actions, move and wait. During execution on grid maps, we need more actions. The robot can move forward or it can wait, but if the node is on the left or on the right, the robot first need to turn left or right by 90 degrees and then move. And if we want to go back, we need to turn back and then move. Let's assume that TT is the time needed to turn left or right by 90 degrees and TF is the time to move forward to the next node. We can assign the best times to these executable actions. So for move forward, we use TF, while for turning left and right, we use TF plus TT. For the waiting, we can select arbitrary time. We decided to use the time somewhere between moving forward and turning left or right and moving, because these are the most frequent actions used in the plan. But these executable actions now have different durations, which could lead to desynchronization uh, during execution of plans, because during planning, we assume the move and wait action to exactly the same time. A simple solution to this problem can be using the same duration for all these sections. Obviously, we need to use the longest duration of these sections. But the consequence is that now the plans will execute longer because some actions need to wait even if they can run much, much faster. There is another approach we can use, and that's including the turning actions directly in the model. Uh, so in the classical approach, we just use nodes as states, and we move between the nodes. A simple suggestion is to split the node to four nodes, describing also orientation of the agent, up, down, left, and right. So that's why we call this model a split model. Uh, we also need to modify uh, the connections between the nodes. So if we want to go from U to V, it's only possible to go from U right 
to the right node and if we go from u from b to u we go from b left to u left the dash arcs in the picture are corresponding to turning actions the full arcs are describing the original move actions so how do these models compare when executed on real robots we use maps with structures like this one the robots are starting at the bottom they want to go up and in this case there is a bottleneck in the middle of the map for other maps we use maps with many rotations with very different lengths of passes or even with swapping of, of robots we generated abstract plans according to various abstract models and then we executed these plans on real robots we used the ozobot evo robots that i showed you at the beginning and we measured various parameters like the success of the execution and make span of the execution this is the result for one of these maps it's very similar for other maps uh, the rows describing various models that we compare and the columns describe the computed make span for that model the number of failed runs we run each plan five times then we have the number of collisions that are non-fatal a total time which is the real make span how much time we need to execute the plan and finally the max delta time which is describing desynchronization of the plan the max delta time is simply the distance in time between the first robot uh, finishing the plan and the last robot finishing the plan so if this distance is zero it means that the plans are perfectly synchronized if it's non-zero it means that the plans are desynchronized and you can also see there are two subcolumns in each column that's because we use two types of maps depending on the distances between the nodes on one map we use the distance five centimeters and the diameter of the robot is about three centimeters and on the other map we use the distance of 10 centimeters so we can see different ratio between turning and moving durations so let's look at the results starting with the classic model we can see that the classic model failed terribly from five runs it was not able to finish any of these plans for the more dense map uh, moreover the max delta time is non-zero which indicates that the plans are not really synchronized which is actually the result the, the source of, of failures we can improve this problem by extended duration of actions to be identical we call this model classic plus weight we can solve that it solves the problem with synchronization but the total make span for execution is much larger in comparison with other models so what about the split model in split model we actually solve the problem with failures the duration of the plan is now much much faster but still the max delta time is non-zero so the plans are desynchronized we can solve it by using weighted arcs in the model we call it a w split model but this requires a modification of the solver uh, to handle edges of different length we also did comparison with so-called robust models in, we use one robustness which means that when we plan there must be at least one node empty between two agents so the hope is that if one agent is delayed we can still execute the plan we can see that we can really execute the plans and the duration of the plan during execution is quite good but the max delta time indicates that these plans are still desynchronized so adding robustness is not the way to solve the problem with desynchronization this brings me to the conclusion of this talk what you can take away if you are constructing an abstract plan you should take in account that this abstract plan will eventually be executed in practice otherwise you may construct plans that will fail during execution thank you for your attention